Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notification. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch. Yes, dear friends, again, because I know that we are approaching the point of our victory. I want you to focus and concentrate because what I'm about to say is very, very necessary. One, the virulent attacks against Simon Eba by certain individuals is wrong and we are advising them to stop forthwith. And I thank God he said he is the last bus stop for any man that wants to derail the Biafran project. So those who are ganging up to attack Simon Eba are making a terrible mistake in their lives because they may not know that they are fighting against God. And they may fall out of the way as some of them are falling out already. So leave Epa alone. And then let's focus on Biafra. He cannot be an enemy to the person you don't like. No, he's focused on Biafra. And he has said it over and over and over again. I want Biafrans to be reasonable. And in fact, you people are reasonable. You are reasonable because I've been hearing contributions. A lot of Biafrans, majority of Biafrans, are encouraging him. That is very good. So we're on the right track. I don't even have to go further there. All those people who are making noise, talking, they should change and repent. Put that one aside. Let's talk another thing. 16, 17, and 18. It's a lockdown period for Biafra. As he has declared, like I've always said, there must be somebody ahead speaking the face of a group of people. So IPOB Autopilot has a spokesperson. It is Simon Eber. And as you can see, BBC is contacting him to discuss issues in respect to that uh, publication that was false from crass journalism being practiced by the Nigerian press. So there's no doubt about who actually is fronting for us now as the spokesperson. That one apart. Now, 16, 17, and 18. Let me tell you something. Many years ago, that was about 30 years ago, or 31 years ago, God told me something. I didn't know that it was going to take this dimension. Because I've always been against that house of Fulani hegemony. I've always been against it because I've always seen it as the way by which the Fulanese dominated the houses through religious means, through control mechanisms, through tradition, interacting with the people and then giving them some opportunities, giving them the impression that together they work as a team and therefore the houses love being dominated by the Fulanese, so they formed a very strong, strong hegemony by which they controlled Nigeria and determines who will be governor, president, minister, anything. They determine the direction Nigeria will go. It is, it is something, it is those who practice uh, 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 communism, uh, a Marxist communist that...
brought about this kind of uh, teaching and it was bought and applied and is functioning effectively that is why it is difficult to separate the outer man from the full animal because he sees himself as one strong north they speak the same language they have the same religion they have the same way of life so when you attack uh, a full animal for the evil he's doing he says attack against the whole north and the north see it as an affront to the authority but the houses didn't know that actually they don't have any authority in nigeria they are slaves being overrun by the full animals, except recently they are beginning to understand it so <clears throat> where we are god gave me that revelation that was about 31 years ago he told me he was was um, ministering to me not that a voice spoke from heaven you know this is my beloved son no as i prayed as i read the bible as i had agitations in my heart as i was cogitating over what's going on in nigeria then which i didn't like remember this thing about being against uh, the uh, northern domination has been in my blood right from childhood when i was seven years old that was when i began to realize it and i hated it and i didn't like it and i've been hoping one day it will stop so as an evangelist preaching the gospel from churches to churches at Abba. The ministration I had was, there was going to be a time when we shall declare and know which is the God to worship and serve in Nigeria so that we can have a direction to go and succeed. But I didn't know that it wasn't Nigeria. It is the Biafran issue. It was about 31 years ago. So I was thinking, that if the whole churches will gather and declare a three days fasting and call upon the God of heaven that we worship so that he will intervene in the situation in Nigeria and bring down the wicked worship of Islam and their devilish God. And um, God took me to the book of First Kings when Elijah had a challenge with the prophets of Baal. It was a typical scenario that is related or makes relative to what is going on in Nigeria now. And Ahab and his wife brought about the worship of Baal in the whole of Israel and forced people to worship Baal. Every street had groves that were planted and statues that were lifted up. In fact, people sacrificed their children on, on, on to cross, made them to cross fire. They, 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 they killed them for bar. And the thing went to the extent that many, many Jews adopted it because they were forced to. It was just 7,000 that were secretly not succumbing to the worship of bar. Just 7,000. And then God raised the man among them that is 7001 by name Elijah and that was how the worship of Baal was challenged by the prophet with 7000 men who even Elijah did not know existed they were in Israel because the comment he made was he said Lord they have dig down thy altars and killed all your prophets it's only me that is remaining he never knew that there were 7,000. That is why I agree with what Mazin Namdekanu said about the 100 men. Listen, this thing is a spiritual thing in the Biafra. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. And I understand it very well. I had this revelation 31 years ago. But now the burden is beginning to come. I cannot hide myself from coming out to speak for people. As God's servant, I can't hide it. I can't just be talking just as a man of God. This is my face. I'm coming out openly. I had this revelation 31 years ago. That we have to bring this thing to an end. And I didn't know it had reference to Biafra. I thought it was Nigeria. These three days, just like the time of Elijah, 
where it was proved. Let me tell you a story before I continue. Let me tell you a story. They, they, there's a, a, a teacher's training college called Basowa, Basowa Teacher's Training College in Zaria, in the north. And <clears throat> every Friday, the Muslims do have their Juma prayers. But school academic activities continued, unabated. But on Sunday, usually was worship day, and Christians go to church. So academic activities don't take place that time. And the Muslims began to protest. By protesting, they were causing problem in the school, and they would suspend, they would go on strike. So one day, we had Christians, born-again Christians, who were in Kaduna, Basowa, Teachers Training College. And then, um, why they kept causing that problem? So that the academic activities will not be disrupted. So that people can read and pass and go and start working. One young man got up one day and said, we are going to solve this problem once and for all. I am telling you, this thing happened. And he called the Muslims and asked them, that's why I'm saying this thing we hear more. I want you to look. I'm coming out there first and telling you. Listen. He told them, do we want to continue our education? They said, yes. Let's settle this thing once and for all. The God that answers prayer is the God who worship so that our academic programs will continue in this school unrestricted. Do you agree, Muslims? They said, yes, they do. Christians, do you agree? Some Christians who are always very careful, you know, we do have them. They didn't talk. They kept quiet. Some agreed. And what happened? One day they gathered together and he called the Muslims and said, you believe that the Quran is the word of God? They said, yes. He said, fine. I am going to bring a bucket of water and put it. And I am going to ask you to take your Quran, pray to your God, and put your Quran in the water. If it sails on top of the water, that word is the living word, is the true word of God. We shall follow it. If not, we we'll drop it. Because we want to know who is the true God having problems, disruption in our academic activities in this school, once and for all. God is looking for somebody that is committed. That is why now the candle came out. <clears throat> and at the corner, there are men that have been waiting. I know we are beginning to come out one by one, wherever you are located. It surprises you that out of 70 million Biafrans, God is looking for just 100 people. 100. And then what happened? He told the Muslims, you start first. And they took their Quran and began to pray. Allah lie, Muhammad is full of lie. They were lying and lying because the Quran is a lie. Muhammad is a lie. Their language is a lie. Their religion is a lie. Their worship is a lie. Their God is a lie. They lied and lied and lied. At the end of the day, he put the Quran in the bucket of water. It sank. And other Christians who were, you know, being careful were saying, let's see how this foolish, just as I'm coming out now, a lot of people be talking trash. This is the time. We are not afraid. We didn't come out on our own. We came out because this thing had been ordained before. And a time such as this will come out to speak. We don't need to be recognized by anybody. And the young man took the Bible. The Bible says when Elijah wanted to pray in Mount Camel, he said he, he, he built an altar. That altar that was built, he repaired it, repaired the altar of sacrifice, repaired it, repaired it very, very well. So the young man came and told believers, we are going to pray to the God of heaven. Today will determine our stand in this school and the God that we worship. As Elijah said, the God that answered by fire, let him be God. He said, if any of you 
don't believe, leave. If any of you believe and you have sinned against God, begin to confess your sins and ask God for forgiveness. Because our God does not behold iniquity. And as he was praying, they were confessing. He lifted up the Bible and said, O oh God of heaven, this is your word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Through him, all things, the word became, it, you know, it took a masculine gender. Without him was not anything made that was made. The word of God is, was God. And through him were all things made. The word of God took a masculine gender in the person of Jesus Christ. And this young man said, Lord Jesus, you walked on the sea. You walked on the waters. Prove, O oh God, today that these men may know that you live and that they will bow and worship your son and declare your glory and majesty in this school that the worship of God will commence and we shall go further with our education. After he had prayed, he took the Bible, put it on the water. It was sailing. The Muslims were shocked. They couldn't believe it, like the prophets of Baal. They bowed down. From that day, the Muslims now realized that the God that the believers worship, those that believe in Jesus Christ, is the true God, is the living God. It didn't need any fighting. It didn't need any other conviction. They saw it. Because most times, unbelievers only see before they believe. But us, we believe, and then we shall see. So, 16th, 17th, and 18th has been declared three days of fasting for their friends. And let me tell you the kind of fasting God expects us to do. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58, During this period of fasting, there are things that you are not expected to do. God is looking for 100 persons who are committed to him personally. When Nam the Khan declared the 150 days reading of Psalms and praying, he didn't say fasting. And in the process, some people who were praying and fasting were abusing people on Facebook. One of them was a young lady. I think she's in France. She abused me. I wrote her a letter and said, I never expected that you will look at my face and begin to abuse me because of the scars I have. And that if God has made you beautiful, it is to his glory to show his marvelous works. So when you turn around and begin to abuse me, you are telling that God he didn't do a good job. And Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says that after God had created the heavens and the earth and everything, he beheld it by excellence. He looked at what he has done and God said it is good. Genesis chapter 1, I told her, I wrote her on Facebook. I said, I feel so disappointed that you, a man mother, that God made a beautiful lady, has turned out to tell God he missed it here. That you have condemned the work of his hands. She did not talk again. She left. I, did, I stopped seeing her on Facebook. I didn't block her. She just ran away. She's a married woman. I told her that I know that your husband knows you are activist in this Biafran struggle. And if I come out and start abusing you, you wouldn't like it. And I have a wife. I don't abuse my wife. I have never told my wife for once in my life, you're an idiot or you're a fool. Talk less of lifting up my hands against her. You can ask her. If I'm saying the lie, if I'm, if I'm telling lies, God will judge me. So I told her that you are a mother. That if I abuse you and children here, how are they going to feel? But it's a pity that you have judged the God, Abiyama, whom you say worship of his works today, that his works are not good. She ran away from Facebook. I never saw her till today. I might, I, I think her name is. Um, I think it's Jomangwa Beke or something. Yes. I just hope she will re re reconcile with me. We are brethren. I don't have anything against her. 
Now this is the fast that God wants us to do. In Isaiah chapter 58. <clears throat> we say we are people that serve Chuko Kika Biyama. You know there are two types of those that serve God today. We have the Jewish servants of God who the Igbos um, trace their lineage to. Then we have those who are born again. Now Christianity is an offshoot. Came out from Judaism. And so that is why Christians don't condemn the Jews. They respect them because they know they are God's people. Biblically is there. Even though they don't believe in Jesus. The Bible says concerning the election, they are beloved for the sakes of their fathers. The covenant that God had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But concerning the, the election, um, the gospel, they are enemies for our sakes. Because if they had believed in Jesus, the gospel wouldn't have come to the Gentiles. So because they did not believe in Jesus, the gospel went to the Gentiles who received Jesus Christ and then they became the enemies of God so that the Gentiles could be the children of God. But in terms of election, they are beloved for the sakes of their fathers. And so all Israel shall be saved. God does not make mistakes. Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. Now, from the Israeli perspective, as an Igbo man, as a Biafran, we pray and fast and God does not answer us. There was a time they went and did an atonement in Biafra land. What happened? I think Joseph Okechuku preached about that thing. Dr. Nelly also talked about the sin of Achan and atonement and stuff like that. Imagine now the kind of talk of atonement. Let me tell you the reason why. God did not answer us then. But the time has come. I didn't know that these three days will fall within this period in life. At the time, I thought that thing had gone. That, that, that revelation, that ministration I had from God wasn't come to pass again. But I now realize that, okay, this is the time. And I've come to address our people. I'm standing as God's servant. As his prophet. I am telling you the truth. We must be released as a people. If, even if it becomes the last miracle that will take place on this planet Earth before Jesus Christ comes. Even if it turns out to be like that, that is what is going to happen. Piafra shall come into manifestation. Because we trace our lineage to Jewish ancestry. That angle of God's prophecy that he will gather his people from the four corners of the earth where they have been held bondage and make them free. Whether they go to Israel, wherever they are, he told them he'll bring them in the land of Israel. But I know there are some Jewish people that still remain in Ethiopia, that still remain in Russia, that still remain in India, but they are free. Our own is different in that we, we trace our lineage from the tribe of God. And that is what is happening. That that prophecy must be fulfilled in our time. We cannot be slaves to slaves. We are princes and kings. That is what God has made the Jewish man, the different man, the evil man. And I've come today to declare to you the reason why God didn't answer that prayer. Cry aloud, Isaiah chapter 58. Spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight. In approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? Say they. And thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And thou takest no knowledge. And God says. Behold in the day of your fast. You find pleasure. And exact all your labors. When we are going to these three days fasting. Those of you who are married. First of all, we begin to start confessing our sins. Anybody remember our Lord's prayer? Nam the Kano used to pray. Everything is falling into place. I don't know whether Uno Narota, 
the falling into place because God is in control. And about this time, I have come to declare it to you that I put your mind straight and let us walk in the path of righteousness to gain our victory. It is just there in the next traffic light that is our victory. Begin to, he made that Lord's prayer and forgive us our trespasses even as we forgive those that have trespassed against us. I don't care. You want God to walk in this thing. Open your heart and forgive people. Drop it. That is why I have never opened my mouth to curse anybody on Facebook. And I love everybody. I have told you that I, thought I can never for once conceive the idea of hurting Chila Samoru or Chike Dozim, regardless of the evil they have done, it is God that will judge them. Or, when the Biafran government comes into existence, we we'll have law courts that they can go there and shoot them. And the court of law will do justice so that everybody's hands will be clean. I will not stain my hands to anybody's blood. My generation shall not, be, shall not be stained. So, after repenting, the next thing he says, he says, in the days of your fasting, you find pleasure. If you're married, during these three days, stay away from your wife. Be focused on the problem that we have. Three days of not having sex with your wife is better than after not having sex, you have Biafra for the rest of your days and enjoy your wife. Three days. How do I know? Let's go to the book of Corinthians. I knew that this day will come when I'll be preaching again. Because I've talked to Biafra for too long. It looks as if I didn't know or I lost my destiny. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the principles for marriage. It says, To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benev benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife has no power of her own body but the husband. And likewise also the husband has no power of his own body but the wife. Do not defraud one another. Except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. And come together again. So that Satan does not tempt you for incontinency. For incontinence. Except it be with an understanding that both of you are going to dedicate yourself to pray, praying and fasting. It will be a, consent, a, 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 a consenting of both parties to focus on a need that is disturbing our soul. Remember, when Ahasuerus was being misled by Haman the Agagite, to destroy the Jews in the time of Mordecai and Esther in the book of Esther. Esther told them to go and tell Mordecai, tell the Jews to join me in three days praying and fasting. And after that, I'm going to approach the king, even if it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. And during that three days, Esther didn't sleep with the husband. She put herself, separated herself apart to Focus and seek the face of God with praying and fasting. Dear friends, God is looking for 100 people. I am telling you, after all this preaching, we may not have more than 100 persons. Or we may have not more than 100 and something. Or at most 200. Out of the 70 million that we have. God is looking for 100. Are you going to be among them? That God has reserved for himself. That will motivate him, that will move him into acting for Biafra. Because this thing is not something of physical energy. For now, the Kanu said that when the time comes, we are going to read more. Is here. He said, You will not depend again on your models or connection or your money. It is your mental strength, your faith in God, your determination. To do what God wants you to do. To be focused. Not to be distracted by what your, your eyes see. 
or your flesh desires. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.